hey everyone, what's up? Josh here, and today I'm going to be working on uh, a tattoo design for a client. Uh, I already have uh, this little sketch going on, but I really don't like it. So <laughs> I'm starting from scratch. Uh, going to follow the entire process for my art uh, design, or my, my tattoo designs. So I've, I've already uh, sort of figured out how I want the cat looking. I don't know about all of these roses. Uh, I don't know about the frame. I really want to add in some sort of uh, bird bones. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start from scratch. Like I've got this idea of the, the hollowed out eyes, which I'm really excited about. Um, but other than that, I'm not really married to the idea that I've got here. So uh, yeah, let's, let's just go back to the beginning and we'll talk about uh, everything in this process. So this is my, my process master document. Uh, I am not gonna follow everything to a T, but uh, I figure why not? Uh, why not at least show it a little bit? So this is the, the process that I like to go through when possible. So designing art, the process. Uh, list the objects, characters, or scenes. So I know I need a cat, preferably a zombie-fied cat. Uh, some sort of king element, so probably a crown. Um, as far as the crown goes, not on the cat, I don't think. I want to like have a, a crown element behind the cat. Um, it needs to give a sense of decay because this is going on a horror-themed leg. <laughs> like the whole leg is going to be horror-themed which I'm really excited about. Uh, what else? Uh, location is actually important here uh, because it's going on the knee. <laughs> uh, which means over the knee. Cap needs to be very simple and bold. That's a, that's a part of the body that does not heal well. Uh, I actually have a, a client who is uh, on like, I wanna say day 30 or 40 of trying to heal her knee and it's just not healing. <laughs> uh, and this is someone I've tattooed her entire leg and it's just one spot on her knee that will not heal. Now I'm not sure um, there, there's a possibility of uh, like a contact infection after she left the studio. I don't know if she has animals. I know she does have kids like me. So uh, kids, kids are little germ factories. Oh, you may have noticed that my last live stream actually disappeared. Uh, that is because I accidentally had a bunch of copywritten music <laughs> in the background that caused some issues. Right now I'm using Epidemic Sound. Uh, I've got my headphones on instead of leaving them sitting on my desk so I can actually hear the music and I know that I'm not breaking any copyright laws. Um, all right, so draw and simplify complex objects. I have already done that uh, on the original design here. Uh, so I'm not gonna redraw and simplify complex objects. I, I do know that I want a different uh, approach next time. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of stage one. Stage two, thumbnails. So I have these turnarounds right here that I like to use when designing a tattoo if I don't have an actual picture of the body part. So I don't need the male turnaround. I do want a front front pose of the female turnaround so that I can get 
this section here. So I'm just going to select the upper leg. Well, I'm just going to select the whole leg. I'm going to cut that, get rid of the thumbnail uh, template body part area there. Just make this. I've got five, six. All right. So I like doing five or six uh, thumbnails when possible. I only really force myself to do five. Um, and it sounds like epidemic sound has turned off, so I'm glad that I've got my headphones on. I really enjoyed all of those, so I am going to add them all to my Liked Sounds playlist. Um, Alright, I'm actually going to go to that playlist. Like Sounds. It's seven tracks. This is the one that uh, this is the one that I put on my recent video. Uh, speaking of which, that recent video, wow, talk about some engagement. Um, if you haven't watched that, uh, I I did something that very much made me uncomfortable to post. So I'm I'm trying to step outside of my comfort zone a little bit. And I did something. <laughs> I did something that uh, actually scared the crap out of me. So I, I posted a video. About uh, making art. Or loving the work you do. That was that was the the real idea is loving the work you do, and people actually sort of misconstrued that. Thinking that I was encouraging people to uh, follow their passions, so I'm I'm actually in the process right now of making a follow-up video and this follow-up video is is going to talk about the practicality of following your passions so I actually don't encourage people to follow their passions uh, I, I am quite on the opposite spectrum actually I, I think that following your passions is a very dangerous thing to do and I speak from experience there because I did uh, follow my passion and it nearly cost my family everything all right so what am I doing here uh, this thumbnail process is really about establishing a value pattern so I want this to be uh, a nice alternation of darks and lights I have some limitations here so I cannot tattoo the outer calf there's a tattoo already there, so I can go up and out or down and in. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm really gonna try to push the dynamic curve here a little bit, and I'm really just 
looking for an interesting silhouette at this stage. Uh, and keeping the <laughs> keeping the, the knee cap itself as lightly tattooed as possible. So uh, let's do some dead eyes and maybe uh, yeah. So already I'm happier. <laughs> I'm happier with uh, this design than this one. And this one's almost, uh, quote, finished. I do like sort of the, the dark wing idea that I had. So this gives me a really good S shape for the, the overall design. And rather than start from scratch, what I'm going to do is say, that is a finished tiny little thumbnail. I'm not zooming in at all. Uh, but what I would like to do is just copy and paste and let's iterate. So that's about where this one is. What happens if I, I don't know. I, I mean, what happens if that's, that's the ultimate question is just what happens if, so I am going to like push some things around. What happens if I go all the way down her leg or what happens if I go all the way up her thigh? and spread this sort of glass frame around what happens if I make the cat's head bigger. So what happens if? It's always a fun question to ask. Oh. And I realized that I did not merge down, so paste. So let's go back to the original one. Let's think about the opposite. What happens if I simplify everything even more? What happens if I, I don't know, what happens if I erase instead of add? What happens if I remove? Like how could I make the cat stand out without a frame? That's an interesting question that I don't necessarily have an answer for. I would need to break the silhouette with something, right? What if the cat is is uh, cuddling a skull? Because that opens up. Some possibilities, right? I'm really not sure what I want to go with here. Uh, I don't know. I'm just going to keep playing. So right now I am I am on the value pattern stage. I'm really not worried about perspective. Focal point's going to be the cat. Negative space is really important. I am, as you can see, drawing through the design. So drawing through simply means uh, going outside of your your bounds. Now that's especially double important with a tattoo design because you have no bounds. Uh, it's a cylinder that you're tattooing on. So that's something interesting to think about. Uh, overlapping, uh, I'll push that even more with the comps stage. But it's really, it's really all about uh, just coming up with ideas at this point. trying to pull up some of my references in a consult form. I also need to grab a sip of coffee here in just a moment.
component folder. Interesting. What if? What if I? If I... so, here I'm going to start from scratch. shapes and say you know the, the cat head still has to be above the knee but not on the kneecap and we do our best to follow the shin we get a light shape a dark shape a dark shape What would this dark shape back here be? I don't know, but I like, uh, I sort of like how this is coming along. It's different, but the same. <laughs> it's different and the same. Uh, and so there's, there's the, obviously you've, you've got the, the hips and groin here. I do not want to tattoo uh, towards the inner, inner thigh. That hurts a lot. Um, so I'm trying to stick to outer thigh and then wrapping around the knee. I do want to go look at some more reference off to the side here, so bear with me. Yeah, I am, I am not the most talkative. I apologize for that. It has been a kind of crazy morning, actually. My, my children's uh, we're very, how should I put it, testy, <laughs> testy this morning, they, they made it difficult to get out the door. So I also want to just think about maybe different flows without really concerning myself too much with what those flows are. So what happens if I push different S-curves like this? Keeping in mind that we want to avoid coming too far up on the inner thigh or the, the outer calf area. Now, I don't have the budget for this project sitting in front of me, so <laughs> I may be way overdoing this. Oh. That's interesting. Hmm. So what if I did maybe some Art Nouveau elements inside of the cat? So Art Nouveau is one of my, my favorite art movements. It It is uh, beautiful. <laughs> if, if I had to just pick a word, Art Nouveau is 
beautiful. Alright, so wrapping around, what happens if we do like a skinnier cat head? And then, oh, oh, I'm actually really liking this one because we get sort of this crescent moon shape, uh, not intentionally. But what if we put a cat head behind something uh, right here? And then get some dark elements coming off of that. Ooh, oh, all right. So far, this one's my favorite, and it was completely accidental. <laughs> um, and we can oppose that crescent moon shape with something else that comes down on the inner thigh, wraps around the knee. Ah, haha, all right. Um, so, happy accident time. That's, that's honestly the best way, in my opinion, to, to really find something, is just explore. Um, take your time, and eventually, you'll find where you're going. Uh, that's true in most things, not just, not just, ah, all right. I don't know what just happened there. down onto a, uh, that works. So I am going to copy this, get rid of the thumbnail layer, let's go to the comps layer. And I am going to paste in my new draw here, let's blow it up. Copy it once. Merge down. Reduce the opacity. So now we've got two comp studies right here. Uh, so pick your favorite comp, use the composition overlays, and remember blah, blah, blah. All right, so I've got some overlay tools here for thirds and the golden ratio. Um, so or the golden spiral, whatever you want to call it. I sometimes like to use these as tools so I can resize them to basically any any size I want um, and fit them over whatever I've got on the screen. Um, I don't always use these, not going to lie, um, but they're there if I need them. I want to go back up here to the, the draw here layer. Let's make a new layer. And I'm just going to start drawing, see see where it leads me. Um, actually, I'm not even going to draw. What I'm going to try doing this time is painting. Yeah, yeah, painting. <laughs> um, I will not lie. Uh, this is outside of my normal comfort zone. So I've been trying lately to focus more on designing by shape or with shape design instead of drawing uh, instead of drawing so I've, I've been approaching my work more and more like a painter so I am going to pick a medium gray and I'm just gonna get to it uh, so I've got some some cats pulled up on another screen Ah, I did not mean to zoom way out. I've got some cats pulled up on another screen, and I am going to use them as reference for this design. So I, I really like establishing some angles first.
the angles, it's really a matter of just making the silhouette look interesting to me. Now this silhouette is starting to look interesting. So I'm just gonna block it all in. Uh, I'm trying out some new brushes by Dave Ravoy. He's a, a Krita superstar. I love drawing in Krita and painting in Krita. Um, so this is, uh, like I said, very uncomfortable for me. <laughs> I, uh, I prefer having a strong drawing before going in with a big blocky brush. Um, that's my preference. But uh, this time, this time I'm, I'm really just going to focus on uh, pushing values. Work on a couple of different layers. What happens if I go in with some super, super light shapes behind the head? That looks pretty high contrast, right? So one of the things that I want to avoid are tangents. And it looks like I'm going to get one right here. Um, I'm going to actually drop the opacity of the draw here layer down a little bit more. Oh, wrong layer. Here we go. So these are... another tangent right there oh well what happens if I bring this shape and make it smaller what if I play with that shape in general I don't know um, so I am I'm just gonna get back to painting whatever uh, seems to be popping out at me maybe we can have another another little accident that turns into something really cool Let's avoid going too high right here, actually. So what happens if I do? So triangles make things look very aggressive. Um, So I just flipped the canvas to uh, really get a, a different perspective on this design. So I'm, I'm actually seeing sort of a, an interesting crow skull shape right in here. That's interesting. Um, I'm gonna lighten this up a little, a little more. Really, I'm just playing with this idea. Um, Uh, 
just for giggles, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull open or pull up uh, some more reference over here and uh, Crown of Bones. But let me turn to Google. Oh, that's apparently a movie or a book. It's a book. Of course, it's a book. Why wouldn't it be a book? All right, I'm really not seeing very many. Uh, cool crowns of bones here. <laughs> I was expecting something a little more interesting. Uh, there's a bone helmet. Looks like it came straight out of Skyrim. Here's something nice and simple. Already sitting at almost the angle that I need, I think. Almost. Oh. Not quite. Uh, so I want to break this silhouette a little bit. Ah, all right, so right now I've got a very, very strong S shape like this going through the design. So what I think would be really cool is to have maybe uh, a small uh, breaking element. What if I did something about like that? I want to give that a shot. So uh, just so I've got... Uh, an exit strategy. I want to come over here and say, all right, what if, what if I've got something radiating from the cat's head to give sort of a, a spiral into? Uh, it's it's almost like arrows pointing at the cat head. Like, hey, look here, look here, look here. I think that could be a decent strategy. Yeah, I think I'm going to I'm going to go with that idea. Like I'll refine the silhouette as I go okay okay so uh, I'm a stickler for saving references Um, so stickler for saving references and whatnot. I also organize everything obsessively. <laughs> um, that's just how I do. How about bat wing skeleton? That's more like it. All right, so if I take so what would be the not easiest but simplest way to pull that off? it look like a skeleton it would have to be light on dark so what I am going to do is flip a batwing skeleton let me pull up that reference again so a batwing you've got the different 
uh, joints, they all connect at sort of a central location right in here. You've got a radius and an ulna, just like a human arm, and then a, a femur. I, I think it's still called a femur in the... Upper arm. So one, two, three, four, five. Oh, that's interesting. So this has, so uh, for, for clarity, wings are basically just like hands, um, especially in bats. So mamma uh, mammalian wings, bats, uh, their wings are set up like hands. So you've got metacarpals, carpals, uh, finger joints basically but what's interesting is so the first one set up just like a human thumb well no it's missing one joint so it has one metacarpal and one joint so our thumbs have a metacarpal and two joints second one has a metacarpal and two joints on a bat then the third fourth and fifth joint or third, fourth, and fifth digits have three joints just like a human hand. <laughs> so I, I, try to, I try to pay attention to silly things like that while I'm drawing. Uh, if I can learn while I'm drawing, then it'll make my drawings more accurate. So this is the concept of a, a bat's wing. What I would like to do is take this, uh, let's make it a new layer, deselect. Um, oh, layer, transform, mirror. And what I'm gonna do is take the bat wing or the idea of the bat wing, invert it, and drop it behind the head here to make this evil cat's crown, the zombie cat's crown. So I'll play with the sizing and stuff. I, I just, oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. As long as I manage the tangents, that looks freaking wicked. Let's shrink it down a little. I'm not worried about it being completely correct. But what I'm going to have to do is uh, invert this and do it in a lighter color. Um, probably, actually, that's an excellent opportunity for some negative space. So that's what I will do there. Um, so I'm going to save this wing mask. Um, and I will use it as a mask to uh, block out some shading. Um, on that note, I really need to use the restroom. So I am going to end this live stream early. I actually had a lot of fun planning this out. I will have this design finished today for my client. Uh, it's it's very important <laughs> since I since I'm starting from scratch. I need to get it done. Um, so I will actually post that on my channel uh, as a regular post. Keep an eye out for my next big video. Um, after the response I got from the last one, I'm really excited to see. Uh, see how many people I can help because that's that's all I really wanted to do with the last one is help some people work through some some thoughts uh, that being said I am not a professional I have no qualifications other than experience and I hope that my mistakes can help prevent uh, other people from going down some of the same paths that I did so on that note I hope you all have a wonderful week I hope you manage to do something you love and I hope that life treats you well so thanks for watching I will I will uh, continue this later and yeah that's I think that's it <laughs> bye everybody